BP and Transocean, the contractor hired by BP to drill their well, have now pled guilty to criminal charges and agreed to pay over $5 billion in fines and penalties, much of which will be directed to restoration of the Gulf environment, specifically rebuilding eroding barrier islands and reintroducing some of the Mississippi River's flow of sediment and fresh water into the coastal ecosystem it once built. We know the BP dollars uh, will be coming. We don't know how much exactly we will see, but we know that they need to be detailed for this restoration initiative. Uh, the kind of central component, I think, of that is using the Mississippi River to rebuild the ecosystem that it once built. The river is why we're here. The river needs to be central to uh, making sure we can still be here uh, over the decades. Battered by the oil industry and the shipping industry, and neglected by state and federal agencies charged with its protection, the future of the delta of the Mississippi River relies on successful implementation of restoration efforts and even larger scale projects envisioned by the Louisiana Master Plan for a Sustainable Coast. I think using the river is the linchpin option. One of the things that we did look at in the Master Plan was how much land could you build if you used all the water and sediment that's in the river. And what do you know? We got more land doing that than we did with any other thing that we looked at. You can't over-engineer this kind of system. Using the river, that's the way nature built this coast. It has to be the linchpin for restoring it. These large diversions are needed because they can build land permanently. And that's something no one in the state really talks about. The master plan isn't a, a one-shot deal. It's not, hey, we're done, we're fixed. Even without sea level rise, which is gonna be horrendous, we're gonna need these projects to be up and working forever. As long as people want to live on this delta, we'll need these projects to continually re-nourish and maintain a little bit of land that's going to be left here. With nearly half of the coastal wetlands of the lower 48 states, the Mississippi River Delta is experiencing 80 percent of the nation's coastal wetlands loss at the average rate of a football field of wetlands turning to open water every hour. The loss of this historic expanse of coastal marsh, cypress swamps, and barrier islands threatens the wildlife which rely on this habitat and leaves coastal communities far more vulnerable to the impacts of storms and sea level rise, both of which are being exacerbated by human-caused global warming. To my eyes, it's central to this restoration initiative that we utilize the Mississippi River and the resources that it provides. As we face sea level rise, as we deal with the impacts of global warming, the only thing we've got to be a continued pulse against that is the Mississippi River. The projections for sea level rise in southeast Louisiana are the highest in the world. NOAA's figures show as much as, or at least, 4.3 feet of relative sea level rise, and that's the combination of subsidence with the static sea level rise. Even though they show 4.3 feet by the end of the century, we have the raw material here to address some of these areas and possibly keep them up with that type of sea level rise. There are lots of people who live in low-lying areas across this coast. We really have to think about a way of giving them a more satisfying expectation of the future than they have at the moment. At the moment, everybody's kind of out on their own or they're trying to get a levy. There has to be a more comprehensive look at how we can put all of our flood tools together to really try to get a sustainable coast where people are not hiding behind levees, people are actually engaging with their coast, people are going fishing and doing the kinds of things that has really supported this culture for hundreds of years. Our coastal communities have been inundated by these rising sea levels, by these stronger storms. We need to make sure that the you know, places people live are as protected as possible by being you know, elevated, by having these natural systems uh, between the communities in the Gulf of Mexico. For the region to continue to play its critical role feeding the nation with fresh wild seafood and for unique coastal cultures to remain and thrive, the future of the Mississippi River Delta must be secured by these restoration plans. At the same time, the worst case impacts of global warming are avoided. Well, I think our leadership in this state is, is failing us, basically. Um, congressional leadership in particular. No spot, as we mentioned, and, and possibly in the world, certainly in North America, outside of the Aleutian Islands, 
uh, is in more danger to sea level rise, to climate change, than southeast Louisiana. And yet, the majority of our congressional delegation, at least the, the Republican members, um, many of them say they don't believe it, they don't believe the science, or they think it's a hoax, or they think it's exaggerated. The use of the Mississippi River is central to this initiative, and these efforts must be jump-started by the BP fines and penalties, which ultimately need to be in the multiple billions of dollars. I say to people in coastal communities, think about your future. Think about what the future holds for you. Think about what you want to do and bring that information to be part of the conversation. We know that there is going to be investment in helping people deal with storm surge flooding in the future. What kind of investments depends a lot on what people want to do in the future. Do they want to hide behind a levee or do they want to engage with their landscape? This is the kind of thing that we need to know. The ecosystems tied to ongoing natural inputs like the Mississippi River, so that the Mississippi River restore, replenish, rebuild that ecosystem uh, that it originally built. And then you look at the communities and make sure they can deal with sea level rise. That means kind of planning for water and where it's going to be. It means elevating some of your most important assets so that people can come back to communities that are still standing after storms roll in. If they want their grandchildren to live in the same place as they live and to have the same type of business as they do, we have to do this. At last, we have a real action agenda for what we want to do on our coast. Uh, there's not all these different ideas. They've been sifted through. We've worked out which ones are the keepers. Now we've got to start moving some of them out. We've really got to work out how we go from concept to design to project to results really quickly. As restoration efforts proceed in the Gulf, Gulf Restoration Network continues to need your support. Please visit healthygulf.org to learn more take action and donate to these efforts.